Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. and I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. Hey, this is what it actually used to look like when we were uh, printing it, but uh, now we're 100% digital. Man, it was a good looking magazine when it was in print. Uh, anyway, but uh, been digital since uh, August of 2021. And uh, here are some of our, uh, Mr. JLL below me. I've got Mr. Chris with Mammoth Car Wash. I've got Tim Holton. I've got the chicken guy above me. I've got uh, Valor Hospitality, VP of Construction and Design coming up on my next cover. They'll post here in a couple days, along with our new website. Finally, it's here. And uh, anyway, I just had another, uh, I was just below 2.9 million people in, in September consuming content. And uh, I'm hoping that we'll go over 3 million either this month or the next month. And uh, that'll be an awesome benchmark. You know, everybody coming, you know, eating content, looking at the magazine. Uh, you know, it's just been an un, un, digital is an amazing thing. You know, I was a print face to face guy and I became digital. And now I'm a digital guy. And, uh, you know, I don't miss the printer. I don't miss the post office. Uh, I don't miss any of those. You know, it's just it's a whole new ball game. And uh, so uh, but uh, hey, uh, you know, the amazing thing about digital is, hey, if you make a little mistake, boom, you can fix it. You don't have to worry about because magazines are already printed out there. That's the amazing things. So, and uh, as a publisher, you're always going to have a typo. You can look at it a hundred times, just like a construction project. You can look at the, your plans a hundred times and then it gets out there and you got to fix things. So anyway, got a lot going on in the world today. We'll talk some sports, some sports. Got the MLB playoffs. Our Braves took it on the chin last night to the Phillies, lost seven, six. And it uh, looks like all the road teams are winning, uh, you know, in the playoffs. But uh, listen, Best of five. They got another game today. Got to win that to make, you know, you know, get the series even. Uh, Falcons took it on the chin for the Bucs. Uh, yeah, yeah, everybody, the, the NFL, there's only, uh, the Eagles are the only undefeated team in the, in the league, 5-0. and oh. And I'm from Philly, so, uh, you know, go Eagles. And, uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of teams, you know, it come, always comes down to a couple of plays. You got the NHL starting, you got the Emma, you know, you got the NBA starting, uh, you got fall ball and lacrosse. And my um, University of Denver Pioneers, uh, they opened up the weekend against uh, last weekend, Friday night, they beat the Irish at home. And then uh, Saturday night, they played University of Maine and uh, beat both of those guys. So uh, we're 2-0. and We're still ranked number one in the country, defending our national championship, number nine from last year. And uh, hopefully they're going for number 10. And uh, so a lot's going on. University of Georgia, once again. Still undefeated. I think, uh, well, they were ranked number two. I don't know what they are ranked this year, uh, you know, this week. Bama barely won. But uh, uh, all in all, uh, exciting stuff here, you know, in the, in the ATL, you know. And uh, today, a little cloudy. I've just seen sun and no humidity. Just beautiful weather here in the south. It's been unreally how nice it is. Uh, we like going out late, late in the afternoon or early evening. We're right out in the boat. No one's out on the lake. Smooth, awesome time to ski or wakeboard. And, uh, you know, listen, I wear a full wetsuit. I'll ski all the way uh, till uh, December if I can. So uh, anyway, uh, the lake is just, Lake Lanier is just awesome this time of year because, you know, pretty much summer's over and uh, kids are doing, you know, football practice and you got to run around. No one's up on the lake. Even on the weekends, it's not that busy. So so it's hump day today in, here uh, in the ATL. And uh, this morning, I have a gentleman down in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, he's an Aussie. And uh, his name is Joel Hutchins, and uh, he is a uh, VP of Industrial. Did I get it right, Joel? <laughs> Industrialized construction. Industrialized That's construction. It. Thank you. Yeah. I had a, you know, I was brain going, I got it right. <laughs> right? And uh, uh, he's with a company called Slate Technology. And what they do is, uh, they're like a, they have a digital assistant that's an AI, and it hel actually helps you make better decisions on your construction site. Um, uh, you know, using AI and, you know, listen, we all need help when you're on the construction site, you know, you might think you got things right on the plans and then you get out there and you're like, wow, this thing, you know, so uh, with technology, uh, just like we're on here on zoom, you know, technology is improving our lives every day. And uh, so uh, I thought it would be uh, uh, pretty cool to have a uh, Joel on to talk about how, you know, you got everybody out there in construction uh, your construction sites, you know, might be able to be more efficient or make better decisions and, you know, calculations, et cetera, and all that stuff. So, Joel, say hello from uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, down good. in South Florida. G'day. Thanks for having us on, Dave. Yeah, no, we really appreciate you uh, 
uh, you know, uh, coming in and being a guest. And uh, so uh, obviously you're from Australia, correct? Grew up in Australia, moved over here. Um, love it here, but yeah, still, still got the Aussie accent, still, still very strong. And uh, yeah, still, still really uh, call Australia home. Well, well you know what? I, I, I'm from the Northeast. I'm a Yankee living in the South. So, you know, up in the Northeast, you got Boston, you got New York, you got Jersey, you got Philly. So we all have our accents. You know, I actually have kind of lost my accent, but some people can still, you know, hey, where are you from? Yeah. You know, but <laughs> Aussies, you can always tell you you're an Aussie, you know, you know, or a Zealander, you know, or a Kiwi, whatever. Yeah, you're, a, you're an Aussie, Kiwi. I'd get a South Africa. A lot of them think I'm South African, but that might just be, you know, I'm in Fort Lauderdale. There's a lot of the yachties. Everybody works on yachts and you've got Australian Kiwis and uh, South Africans. Everyone always gets a little bit confused, but yeah, still a very strong accent. And the more time I spend here in the US, the more I'm starting to understand all the US accents and, and pick up where people are from as well. Well, 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 welcome to the S. We like having you here, you know, and uh, you know, we, we're, we're the melting part here in the States. So um, here's how it's going to work, Joel. Um, we do it in three parts here on Commercial Constructory Coffee Talk. Uh, you'll tell your story, you know, where you grew up, you know, brother, sisters playing these sports. Uh, and then, uh, you know, how you, uh, you know, got into, you know, where you are today. Then we'll talk about the uh, roller coaster over the last 30 months, you know, lessons learned, uh, you know, any new products that may, you might have coming out. And then you'll leave our audience with one positive thought or phrase, your contact info, and then we'll close it out. So with okay. that said, the floor is yours, Joel. Tell us your story. Yeah, awesome. So as you mentioned, I grew up in Australia. Um, I played rugby, uh, played at a very high level, played all over the world um that was life right um that and surfing i still managed to get the surfing in most days uh growing up in australia that's what you do i grew up on the gold coast some of the best surf in the world so um grew up there rugby traveled the world and then really fell into carpentry became a carpenter um grew up really with my parents renovating every year they would renovate they sort of grew they climbed the property ladder and being just around them, um, not in construction, but just loved it, right? And in real estate. Uh, so fell into carpentry and then evolved, really started to get into the building side, into the GC side before I did a, a development. I jumped in and did development project myself and designed it. And that was featured in a magazine. And it was, you know, it was a, it was a real sort of um, highlight of my career, which then I decided, well, you know what, I'm going to go study architecture. I'd finished my rugby career. I was fortunate enough that I could go and do that. Um, went in, studied architecture. Once I started studying architecture, I really wasn't a drawer. I could draw, but I, this idea of drawing and then producing design intent and then passing that off and letting, leaving that up to someone else, I didn't really, didn't resonate with me. There was all this new technology. There was CNC machines, all these like robotics. Um, and then there was this idea of computational design and not being even a coder myself, but this idea that I could design something to run a machine, have the machine produce a kit of parts and then put that together just fascinated me. That's where I wanted to go, right? That I could leave it and what we now refer to as design for manufacturing and assembly, DFMA. It's the new buzzword of the industry. I was really at the, the forefront of that. I was looking at how we built, how anything else is designed that we engage with our phones, consumer electronics, all of this idea that we could actually design it to the machinery, have a kit of parts come together on site. And I didn't really need to produce drawing. So I sort of worked my career or my, my architecture um, schooling with that in mind. I pushed that to the absolute, absolute extreme. Um, then in, once I finished my bachelor degree, I went and, lucky enough to go work in Tokyo for a famous architect, Shigeru Ban, um, where they did a lot of curvy, wavy timber structure. And I, again, pushed it to the extreme there, did a lot of the computational design, a lot of the, the coding to run machines and worked with the, um, the big, big um, engineering firms. Before I returned to Australia, while studying my master's, started a company called Studio Workshop. Um, design, fabricate, build is really the tagline that we had there. We started, uh, a friend of mine and I started that company. We started building decks, docks, everything we could to pay the bills, to buy, first of all, to buy a CNC machine. And then we looked at what could we actually, how could we design something to run and build a kit of parts on, on the machinery and then have that go out and that be the product. 
so that you know we how could we start to create products rather than just projects and we sort of a lot of people refer to the McKinsey report recently with that but that's where we're at um as we progress through that we really started to find ourselves in between architect and builder a lot architects would produce something design it build a gc would receive it we sort of sat in the middle saying we'll help you solve how do you actually build that how do we create a kit of parts how do we leverage machinery and technology to do so and then create a kit of parts and ship that off or have that uh, arrive on site that then led to industrialized construction, modern methods of construction, offsite, whatever we want to call that. You know, we all refer to it in different sort of uh, terminology, but led to this idea that, well, really being pulled in by GCs and other people to help solve those, um, those issues or to when they were looking to adopt more industrialized construction, how could they do so? This is really where my career took an absolute turn um i was doing developments i was doing well with the architecture firm i put it all to the side and said you know what the problem here is that we have all of this great machinery all of this off-site manufacturing but anything any of, of the benefits of that that we could gain through off-site is lost in the process because we have to just redesign projects and every machine takes its own code its own design its own knowledge we need to do a better job of solving that and that was where we uh started splash modular Splash Modular, although it was a, a bathroom pod manufacturing business, um, was based around the idea that we could actually design the bathroom pod to leverage widely available machinery. And then we could automate the design process so that we could take a design, run it through our automated software. It would produce right the way down to the machinery files, the shop drawings autonomously. And then that was our product. So we actually didn't build the bathrooms ourselves. We licensed it to somebody else, had ran the supply chain machinery, had the kit apart show up to the factory, and we made two and a half percent on every bathroom built. So that idea is what we patented. We called it a customizable digital product. And what we did was productize the process and show the industry how you could do so. Um, fast forward, just before we got ready to actually roll out a marketplace for these components and start building them for other people, Slate acquired us. Um, so fast forward now to where we are and now the idea of productized process has really become the, the, the forefront of, of how we actually can provide insights or what we can do with the digital assistant. So I can touch on that and I'll dive in deeper there when we're ready, but that really is the, how that's evolved and my, my career path, I guess, has fallen into, um, into what I, to where I am today and, you know, at 35 years old, I've, I've the, the, the career path put me in a position that I um, have been able to, to really strive to, to do things better through, through computational design, through technology. You know, I bet you, your rugby, you know, you, you know, you go all get in the yeah. scrum, you know, and uh, you know, it's all these bodies that are interlocked and you got to figure out the best way to, you know, get the ball out to the, you know, anyway, you look at that and that's, that's basically your story. You had all these moving parts, you know, different guys, sides, guys there, they're playing the field, but the same thing here. You know, you're an architect, you're a surfer, you're doing this, you're a rugby player, but you know, all those things actually came to mold you to where you are today. I always put things with sports. I like, yeah. I love talking. I don't care if you're a surfer, <laughs> ping pong player, you know, whatever you play yeah. sports, you're a competitor. So, yep. and you always have to be flexible because sometimes you get into a game, you had a game plan and it's not working. You got scrapping, you got to be flexible to, to move someplace else. Right. Yeah, and I think, yeah, the sports analogy, I think that that's really, maybe it's just all the head knocks that I'm so crazy and have such a risk appetite. But I think as a, and I don't really like to use the word entrepreneur, but as an entrepreneur, as somebody that sort of has that risk appetite and, and through that, haven't been sort of held back from changing career paths or starting new businesses and striving for that. I think that that's really what the high level of rugby taught me is, is how to just dig in <laughs> and get it done and how to just go for things and, and not have that fear of holding back or, you know, and I think that that's resonated through business. It's resonated through my career path and really, especially in construction, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough business as it is, but then throw in, you know, the guys that, that are out there with their own businesses and, and going for it. It's a real tough business to, to make it work. So, you know, AI has kind of a, a good, you know, good guy, bad guy, you know, you know, sentiment these days, because a lot of people say, oh, AI is going to get rid of jobs, but and, uh, you know, in, you know, on our side, AI is improving, you know, if I can have, like, let's say I'm building a, a, a tall building 
and I've got to put in, uh, you know, AC ducts. And, you know, a manual guy, he might not get it straight or he might not have everything done exactly. But if I can have an AI machine do it, everything is perfectly, you know, everything's done perfect. You know, yeah. you program it, you know, just like you do the CM CNC machine. You program it, every piece that comes out of there, it's, it's, it's going to be like identical. So, yep. you know, it's, it, 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 you know, it's one of those things. My, my, my thing with AI is it just has to be implemented in the correct way. You're still going to need people to build those machines. You're still going to need people to, you know, uh, you know, unload. Well, there, there's still going to be manual labor in construction. I think that's it, right? And I think that the last two years through everything we've been through has, uh, has really shown us that technology can facilitate us to do, do it better. And I, it's not to replace us. It's to help us do a better job. And, and when I talk about Slate and what we're building, I, I point to some of the products out there. And one of them is Waze. The Waze app, we, we, we put in, we want to go from A to B. And traditionally, you would come across all this intersecting data, all these things that would happen to us on our way to getting to the shops or getting to work. And something like Waze now can look at it and it can say, look, there's a crash ahead. But if you turn left, because your knowledge, you know that if you turn left, you can avoid it. But there's roadworks to the left. So actually, you're better off doing a U-turn and going back around on yourself and you'll get there better. And that's some, a, a prime example of where artificial intelligence and technology can help us do better. And then I think the second part of that is really through ways, it's really your knowledge. You might override that or you might do something. And now your knowledge, which is uniquely yours and got you there better, can transcend the individual and help other people do it better. And I think that that's really where the major opportunity sits here in construction is that so often we're making decisions on site that we don't have all the relevant data. We don't have the ability to actually look at it that way. And then what you make a decision on site building something and we work for the same company, I'm not going to be able to make the same decision. I don't know that your decision got you there better. It's very, it's uniquely yours. And so the, this idea of building organization intelligence as well is something that really resonates with me when I talk about productized processes. When I talk about when we want to move construction, we want to move the needle forward, we need to do better at actually understanding that the IP is really in how we build things, in our process on how we deliver. Um, yes, we talk about industrialized construction and offsite manufacturing products. But for me, the real thing, the real product here is the process is how we actually deliver these projects. And I think that that's where the major opportunity lies. So when, when you know, looking back, you know, uh, at, you know, March of 2020, uh, were, you in, were you in the States at that time? Yeah. yeah, so funny enough, it was just the splash modular really started to move along. We were building, well, we weren't building bathroom pods, but we were, we were, we were starting to hit some revenue targets because bathroom pods were being implemented on projects and, and we were really humming. Um, and the software side of the business was evolving. We were looking at raising capital. Um, we we're actually in North Carolina, based in North Carolina. It was, uh, you know, an interesting time throwing Aussie into North Carolina, and <laughs> it was uh, a bit of an eye opener for me. And I really got to embrace the the US lifestyle, the the South. Um, but yeah, we were we were in the mix. We were starting to hum along, and it really started. It threw a spanner in the works, right? <laughs> it was. Um, but again, being agile enough um, and being with the software backbone, we were able to adapt um, quite fast and, and leverage the technology. Again, leverage technology to, to put us to where we needed to go. We weren't sort of stuck in the mud. We, we, we were agile enough that we could move around and transform the business model to, to really go after the software side. Yeah, um, um, where were you, in Ra were you in Raleigh? Where were you? It was actually in a place called Southern Pines or Pinehurst. A lot of people know the golf course there, right? Um, right. So yeah, Southern Pines, just outside of Raleigh. <laughs> um, you have well, you're only, you're only about two and a half hours from the from the coast, Wilmington. You know, and, yeah. So two and a half hours to the beach. You know, still not much surf there though. Or two and a half hours to the sort of Tennessee to, to the to the mountain ranges. So there's yeah. a lot to do. Um, made buddies with a bunch of special forces guys there, and you know, got to got to embrace the real American life. Um, it was cool. It was cool. It was a great time. But yeah, definitely um, an eye opener. Well, having having everything happen and being being stuck in Southern Pines, North yeah. Carolina. Listen, I can think of worse places to be stuck. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. 
I get to go worse places. You know, that's not the worst place to be stuck. You know, yeah. uh, I did my stint in uh, North Carolina. I was in Greensboro, but I knew that uh, the beach was still two and a half hours away. And, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, 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 good people, nice place to live. Don't to get, don't get too cold in the winter. Nice, plenty of golf courses. And, uh, you know, it, uh, uh, very cool place. And, um, uh, yeah. well, well, we're back. Joel lost his power down in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Like I haven't had that happen to me before this summer. So God, being flexible. Now he's on his cell phone. Talk about moving on a dime, just like on the construction site, you know, <laughs> apropos for our conversation. So Joel, before you lost the power and I saw you were frozen, uh, I, we were talking about, you know, looking over the last 30 months and, uh, uh, you know, every, you know, depending on what state you were in, and you know how companies operated, and being construction, and if you yeah, were working on a central project, those things kind of just went, you know, went along as they were. But looking back at your own firm, you know, I mean, some firms, you know, were completely remote, some were hybrid. Um, everybody did it differently depending on where they were, you know, in the country. But you know, talk about you know, kind of your firm, you know, how you kind of made it through you know, the roller coaster as we come out of the tunnel here, as we, you know, we've opened up and, you know, things trying to get back to normal. Yeah. Look, I think that the biggest thing there is being agile and so ironic that the power cuts out and here I am <laughs> on my phone, right? But it was being agile. And I think that it's also how you, how you, how we looked at it. And it was, we had a, a business of, of building bathrooms or was, of selling the bathroom pods and um, the loss of revenue, we could have sat there and, you know, cried it out but instead we looked at it and we said look the technology and the software that we're building here this is the perfect time for us to be agile and pivot and really push on that um and then that led to the acquisition it led us to probably being a little bit early with the product in terms of software and what we we're trying to sell with the value proposition but again it, it then led to the acquisition the acquisition then led to now being part of slate and as we've been in Slate, what a perfect time for us to build a software platform. What a perfect time for us to really dive in and, and start to build something that is going to change the industry um, and, and really building a technology platform or a software that's going to help facilitate us to do a better job leveraging technology, which is, again, something that we've all start, become so used to now. So there was a sort of resistance to technology in a lot, but now we've we've really embraced it and we're, we're better for it our lives are better for it i believe you know we're, we're able to really sort of um have our time work remotely do all this stuff be to, connected be together um it, it's it's really helped us to to do that and i think that as that moves forward and we look at what we're building from with slate and technology the adoption of technology can help facilitate a better way of doing things and I, and I and it really has showcased that I think in the last two years so again it's it's how you are agile how you take a positive spin a positive look at it it's something that a way that I've lived my life um you know as we talk about the, the career progression and everything else it's just a way that I've lived my life so um I'm thankful for it to be honest <laughs> it's been interesting I think for construction as well it's I'll, I'll leave the here with the note that it's really pushed us to look at how we do things better it's really pushed us to look at how we adopt more off-site how we adopt more industrialized construction um something that we were starting to but it was really an inflection point for us to really move the needle and start to to adopt a bit more so you know I, you know i'm a judge on the modular building institute uh, awards every year you know and I, I i i critique uh you know retail hospitality projects and stuff so you know, I always liked the, the uh, you know, the modular portion of things, you know, building things off site, bring them in, sliding them into like, you know, the, uh, you know, kind of like, a, you know, a, a filing cabinet per se. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with bathroom pods, like for a hotel or for, you know, a building, you know, resident, whatever it might be. And, uh, you know, uh, and being consistent. So they're all, they're all accurate. And, uh, you know, with technology, just like here, you know, today, you know, uh, you know, I could have, you know, what before, before, before with the shutdown, I was going to do my podcast, you know, on the construction sites, you know, maybe mm -hmm. one month, you know, I was using zoom, but very rarely, you know, now yeah. everybody uses zoom, you know, they all tell me that they're, 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 they're sick of it, but you know what? I'd rather do a zoom call for 15 minutes and get in my car and go drive three hours for a 15 minute meeting when I can do it right here, or I can do it on my phone on FaceTime or whatever application that you want to do. 
And uh, this is just made, and, and look at me, I was a print face-to-face guy, you know, an event guy. And now I'm 100% digital. I am doing a hybrid event in January, but still I'm, I'm, I'm doing it virtually. And uh, yeah. because I want to, you know, I want to get all, you know, the people across the country that don't want to make the trip, but they still want to hear maybe my keynote and, and be able to do, have some conversation just like we are right now. And yeah. um, this is not going away. It's just, yeah. not, and it's been kind of like a catalyst. And I also look at like, you know, retail, you know, uh, retailers, they got to, they got to refresh their, 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 even hoteliers, you know, everybody's got to put fresh paint, new fixtures in carpet, uh, keep the stores looking, you know, nice. And really it was an opportunity to get rid of some of that dead weight, uh, you know, in the real estate portfolios, those, all those buildings that, you know, might've uh, got their leases broken or, you know, what have you, they're going to be picked up by something else. They got to figure out what they're going to do with them, but someone else is going to have to build them. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, if you're in Florida right now, all my heart still go out to, uh, you know, Fort Myers and that whole Western side, they got whacked by Ian. Uh, but, you know, there is a positive in there, you know, the negative is people, you know, lost everything, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, it's, you know, no power and it's going to take a long time to rebuild all that stuff. But from a, from a construction point of view, it's all going to have to get rebuilt. And the biggest thing is to, to, to build it the right way. So yep. if there's another storm that comes in. We won't have that kind of damage, you know, just like we were talking before we got on, you know, on here, artificial intelligence could be very, very crucial in that, you know, designing, like we were talking, Hey, the storm surge was, you know, 12 feet, you know, 17, whatever it was, it was a historical storm surge. Well, how about building those houses up high enough that the storm surge is not going to get on there, you know, yep. and, uh, and, and building the code and, you know, so we don't have to deal with this again. Um, yep. and, um, so technology is an amazing thing. You know, it's how you implement it and and go with the flow. Just like yeah. you were frozen and boom, we're right back. You <laughs> well, know? And I think that I think that it's technology really was like it, it enables that transition and it helps facilitate that. It's not replacing anything, you know, in that it's helping us do a better job. And I like to use when I'm explaining Slate, I like to use the analogy of of a recipe, right? And at the core of Slate, we talk about digital assistants. But at the core of it is this idea of, of, of recipes. And just like my great-grandmother's chocolate cake, it's, it's got passed down over generations and we've, and we've done it better. And, and, and people have added to it. And although that recipe is a piece of crumpled paper or folded paper in my mum's top drawer, it, that idea that the intelligence is built over time and that we've tested it and, and adapted has actually, that, that foundation of that recipe is really what has enabled that chocolate cake to get better. But when I, and, and I, when we talk about rebuilding and we talk about lessons learned, I think that that's really important. And that's something that artificial intelligence can really help us do. So it's not about replacing, using the, the recipe analogy is at the core of Slate is the idea of recipes, construction ideas, taking that and making a chunk of tasks, which is essentially a recipe, like a chocolate cake, um, build over time from an organization and understanding how we do it better. So. Like we said, with ways transcending the individual that we now know there's a better way to do it, it's storing that and then making sure that the, the right data gets to the right people at the right time. And so to close that out, it's really to look at it and say, the chocolate cake recipe, I've got it, my sister's got it. She's going to do a great job. I'm going to mess it up, right? <laughs> and this is where artificial intelligence and, um, and the digital assistant can really help. I'm whipping the eggs. If I've messed that up, I want the assistant to be able to say, because of previous knowledge or because of knowing and looking at intersecting data, it can actually say, throw the eggs out, start again. You're not going to save them. And this is really what we're building at Slate is the idea that you have a recipe and how we engage with things and we build that knowledge over time can be stored and you can have a digital thread. And, but then the digital assistant can help us do it better. It can deliver the right data to the right people at the right time to make sure that they make better decisions. And then the decision you make, looking at the impact of that can come back it can be analyzed and it can evolve over time. And I think that, that beautiful, that's the beautiful thing about what we've built at Slate, but also in technology across the board, when we talk about ways, when we talk about any of this other stuff, is how it can really help us do a better job. Just like our phones help us through Google um, be smarter, essentially. We can quickly find the answer to something which we couldn't before. Or like this, that Zoom, we can jump on, we can do a podcast, we can interact with people across the US, we can get 
this story and and we can talk about all of this and broadcast it out there's so many wonderful things to technology and and i think it's really the adoption of it isn't something that should be feared by anybody you know look look, you were surfer long boards short boards lighter boards i mean you're still surfing you know know, it's the progression it's the progression of 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 of, uh, innovation you know i was a lacrosse player i used to use wooden shafts you know tight shorts tube socks you know now you know, lighter equipment, you know, but it's still the fastest game on two and it's still played the same way. It, it's yep. just, uh, you know, the, the equipment is just more improved. And um, uh, I always look at my, my old, uh, when I talk to lacrosse players, you know, you know, I'll send a picture of uh, 1982 against Air Force. You know, there I remember my, my, tor- my, my tidy, tidy whiteies and, uh, you know, my wooden <laughs> shaft. And, you know, now it looks, they got the bag of hand. I'm like, look, it's still the same game. It's still played the same yep. way. There's still some big Chocolate. ones out there. The chocolate mud cake is still a chocolate mud cake, right? It's exactly. just my grand. I'll argue that my grandmother's chocolate mud cake is better than yours because of the evolution, right? And and exactly. So it's just I think. But then when you actually, the major thing here is that as technology advances, it's it's going to help us all do a better job. Um, so I think that's the big. Yeah, absolutely. I'm totally with you. So if you were um uh if you were going to leave one positive thought or phrase with our listeners out there, you know, with your diverse background there, uh, you know, what would it be? Yeah, so it's actually, I've got it tattooed on my arm. It's life is a manifestation of the conversations in your head. And I think that that is something that resonates when we talk about business, we talk about the pen, that we talk about, you know, what's happened over the last few years. We talk about all of this stuff. It's really how you look at things. It's that it's how you interpret them and how you react to them that is, is how you'll manifest your life. So if we continually look at things negatively and we look at technology negatively, or we look at things that are happening to us negatively, then that's really how we'll, our life will uh, resonate. But if we, if we look at things positive and we take a positive spin on things, we fill the positive bucket a bit more, then life will actually manifest in that, in that way. Um, so it's something that, you know, through my career path, as I've been agile and not been scared to uh, adapt and take different paths, or even you know through my my sporting career, whatever it is through technology, it's really that um, I'm continually looking at how the things that happen to me or the things that are happening in my life is really how how I look at them, and I take a positive spin, and then that's how my life is always you know how I'm 35 and really have, have been able to have such a successful career so far, um, and and I think that that's that's just how I live my life, and it's something that I, I preach to a lot of people is really. Um, how we, we've got to look at things, how we've got to adopt technology, how we've got to get through some of these crazy times that we have. Um, so, yeah. Hey, listen, I'm all about the, you know, I just took a, I'm taking a digital class. I'm in a boot camp for 12 weeks. And every Monday I take like a four hour from six to 10, I'm online with, 10, with a group of 10 people. And uh, uh, anyway, learning stuff every week. But the biggest thing is mindset and mm-hmm. getting rid of negativity. And negativity is, is just the worst thing that you can have. Don't, you know, if you're surrounding yourself with negative people, cut them loose, get rid of them. You don't need them. They're just, they're just dead weight to you. You got to stay positive. You're going to make mistakes, but you got to learn from them. But that negativity and having a positive mindset is going to get you so much further where whatever you're doing, I don't care if it's sports, yeah. baking a cake, freaking making modular bathrooms. It doesn't matter if you, if you, if you have a positive mindset, and you're willing to accept, you know, your mistakes to learn from them. It's not a bad thing when you lose because you learn how to beat that team down the road. Just like you, when you learned how to surf, how many times did you fall before, yeah. you, you know? So, yeah. it, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm a sports. I always go back to sports, you know, I, you know, yeah. it's when yeah. you lose. <laughs> and I think that, you know, when I talk about technology and we talk about what we're offering here with Slate, it's really, I had this discussion with someone yesterday and it was like, well, for us to go and create a recipe, for us to take this move to get into Slate and do this, there's this and there's that. And I was like, but what if you don't? What if you don't? And the project manager that made a decision today, there's a positive result of that. But the project manager on the other project down the road doesn't know that that was made, right? And, and you don't start to build this organized intelligence. So you're going to be continually making the same mistakes over and over again. And it's exactly that. It's like, why not, right? Take a positive spin on this. Look at it positively. Jump in, embrace it, and start to move forward. Yeah, I, li- I like the recipe analogy, man. It's awesome. Hey, all you guys out there, you know, on that construction site, you got a recipe going on there. You know, use the AI and 
you know, make it better. Exactly. And the way that we build all our buildings is based off of recipe, chunks of work, chunks of tasks that are repeatable. No matter how we look at it, every, I believe that every project needs to be unique and it will be unique because of a lot of intersecting data because of contextual and situational data. But it's all fundamentally still the chocolate cake, right? It's all fundamentally still the same methods and approach. And all of us that work in construction, that is our value. That is what makes us, that's what makes my chocolate cake better than yours is how I do that. So by laying a digital thread, it's essential to you starting to be able to move forward and, and really build your IP, build your product. Awesome. Awesome. If, if, if someone out there on commercial construction coffee talk wanted to run, run something by you or, you know, find out what your uh, grandmother's uh, recipe is, the secret <laughs> recipe or what have you, uh, how would they reach out to you? Yeah. So best by email. So it's joel.hutchins at slate.ai. So j-o-e-l dot h-u-t-c-h-i-n-e-s at slate s-l-a-t-e dot a-i send me an email i'd love to hear from you let's uh let's chat awesome for those who want to reach me i'm at david c at ccr-mag.com if you're not a subscriber hit the subscribe button uh and uh i know you're tired of me saying this but i always tell you like you know if you don't send me content I can't, I can't find a place to post it or put it in the magazine or what have you. It's like buying a lottery ticket. If you don't buy one, you can't win. So, you know, send me stuff. We love it. It's a win-win. I post it. I send you the link. You share it. You help each other's SEOs and all that stuff. And, you know, so, uh, and we look at everything. And uh, it could be a golf tournament. It could be a chocolate cake recipe. You know, it could be any of those things. Send it to me. I like, I like putting all that stuff up there. You know what the amazing thing is? Before, but before the shutdown, I used to just put construction stuff up there. Now everybody realizes that they've got other stuff other than just life, you know, I mean, work. They've got a life, you know. And uh, so now I post all sorts of stuff, you know, how to buy exotic cars, you know, what's the best iPhone. I even, have, you know, half my circulation is female. So I even have ladies that'll, that'll send me posts about how to buy the, the right extensions and stuff. I put that stuff up there. Maybe some of the guys want to put that on there. I don't know. Half the time, guys are girls these days. I, I can't, I don't know. But I put it up there, you know? So I'm, I, I, you know, but it, it, it's amazing. You know, the, the digital, you know, information is addictive. It, it is, it is, you just want more of it. And that's why I think AI is so cool because, uh, you know, the more that we learn how to manipulate it in, in the correct way to help things, it's just, wow, man, what else can I do with it? And uh, so, uh, well, thoroughly enjoyed the conversation. You know, sorry the power went out, but look, guys, boom, we're right back at it. You know, it's amazing. You know, flexibility. You got to be able to, you know, like I said, it's like sports. You went in a halftime, get your, your tails kicked, scrub it. We, you come back out, you win the game. Power went out, boom, we figured it back out in less than like two minutes. So uh, anyway. Joel, pleasure speaking with you. I, I look forward to meeting you in person. Uh, you know, no fist pumps. I'm going to shake your hand. And, uh, uh, you know, look, you know, Florida's got some uh, you know, nice surf. It's not it's not Australian tubes or anything like that, you know. But the bottom line is, uh, if I come down there, I'll bring my wetsuit. Boom. I'll have to rent a board, but I'll, I'll get back out there. I'm sure I can still get up. And, uh, you know, it's been a while, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, still, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll go do some tubes. You know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, if you ever get up in the ATL, we'll go out in the boat and we'll uh, do some wakeboarding or uh, some skiing. So sounds good. Um, I'll take you up on it. And uh, thank you for having me. Great to no, be listen, here. we appreciate you. You know, uh, getting up early here in the morning. And uh, for all you out there, commercial construction coffee talk. Look, it's the middle of October. You got uh, Halloween coming up. Uh, then you got Turkey Day and Thanksgiving, and then uh, you got Hanukkah, Festivus, you know, Christmas holidays, uh, and then boom, this year's over. Close the books on 2022. It's, it's going to be there before you know it. And then uh, January is coming up. And uh, uh, listen, our summit, it's going to be hybrid, January 26th, 12 to noon, uh, noon to four, excuse me, EST. Uh, I'm going to have all the Atlanta locals in the, in the studio I'm doing it at. So if you're out there in Atlanta, we'd love to have you. I'll feed you some lunch. Got a great speaker. And uh, we'll do a little meetings. And then we'll close out with a fun activity. And uh, it's right down from the Braves Park. So afterwards, everybody wants to go to the bar and hang out and so forth. Uh, the Battery is an awesome place to go to. And uh, so put it on your calendar, January 26th, noon to four. 
and uh, look, you can come in virtually. And if you're local here in Atlanta, hey, you can come in person, sit in the studio. So we'd love to have you. Uh, but Joel, thank you so much for uh, being a guest on Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. And to all of you out there, have a great rest of the week. And uh, if you're out there on the construction site, remember, stay hydrated, be safe, most important. Okay. Uh, and um, with that said, I will, we will see you next time on another episode of Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. And Joel, look forward to meeting you in person. All right, man. Yes, likewise. Thank you. All right, man. Cheers. Yes.